Hey guys, it's Becky with Design Bundles and I am back again today to bring you another tutorial for Silhouette Studio. What we're going to talk about today is using the Modify Panel. Now, don't let it intimidate you because we are going to walk you through step by step on what the Modify Panel is, all the features included, and then of course we're going to show you how to put it to good use. So by the end of this tutorial, you're going to be so thankful and just jump straight into using the modify panel for all your creating needs. All right, guys. So here we are in Silhouette Studio and we are going to go ahead and play with some basic shapes and explore the modify panel together. So the modify panel is found over here on the right hand side. If you hover over it. It says open the modify panel. If you're not comfortable with icons, you can also use the panels menu up here at the top and scroll down to modify. With the modify panel open, let's bring in some basic shapes. We're gonna use a circle and a square and we'll use a polygon. All right, so there we go, three basic shapes. And just to make it easier, I am gonna go ahead and fill them in with color. We'll just do red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do on the Modify panel is talk about Weld. Now, Weld is probably one that you are already used to using, but we're used to using it on our shortcut menu here. Okay, but that tool is actually here in the modify panel. And what you can do is if you select more than one shape, you can weld them together. Okay. Now that's also useful. Remember we use that with script fonts to weld them together. So definitely a lot of different things, basically any shape, any text, anything like that that you bring into Silhouette Studio, you can weld together to create one larger shape. Now let's talk about subtract. If I were to take this square, now note that the square is on top of the circle, and I select them together and hit subtract, the square subtracts out from the circle. Okay, if I take the square and send to back, now that the circle is on top, if I select them both and hit subtract, then it subtracts the circle from the square. So that is exactly what subtract does. It subtracts the top layer from the bottom, and you can manipulate how that works by choosing which shape is the top layer. Okay, now let's talk about subtract all. So if I select two shapes and choose subtract all, what happens, even though it looks like it didn't do anything, it subtracts it, but it keeps your top layer intact also. And then if I join in a third shape and choose subtract all, it does the same thing with all shapes. So that is definitely extremely useful. Let's get those back to our basic. There we go. Okay. Intersect. If I select two shapes and choose intersect, it basically gives me the area where they intersect, correct? If I select three shapes and choose intersect, I still only get the area where all three of them intersect. Now let's talk about divide. What divide does is it takes all of these individual pieces and divides them out together. And last but not least, you have crop, which is one that I use most often. And basically where intersect, all right, let's look at the difference between the two of these. With intersect, it's going to give me the place where they all intersect. With crop, it's going to crop down only the areas that aren't interacting with each other. So it gives me, here, let's take a look at this with a line color and a transparent fill. 
So when I select all of these and I hit crop, it gives me all the areas that were overlapping and not just the one area where they all overlap. Does that make sense? Crop is what I use most often, uh, crop and subtract. So some of these other areas, I won't say that they're not important. They are important, but they're not going to be as commonly used as others. Now let's talk about make and release a compound path. If I take my polygon and put it in my circle, here, let's get rid of that guy. We don't need him anymore. Okay, I have two shapes. And if I group them together, let's get where you can see all this. Because a lot of the questions that I get are, what's the difference between grouping and making compound path? When I group these together and I fill with color, any color will be fine. Let's do yellow. You will see that basically, here, let's move that to back. There we go. But there's still two separate shapes, okay, even when I group together. Now, when I take these two and I make a compound path and then fill with color, see how that middle stays white? So basically, the difference is grouping is just that. I'm grouping together two different shapes to say, hey, let's hang out together. When I make a compound path, I'm telling Silhouette Studio that these shapes are combining to make one greater shape, okay? So these are still recognized as two shapes. These are now recognized as one shape because we have combined them together. When it's time to release a compound path, you can just choose release and you're back to the same result. Now, let me also show you one more thing. When I use a tool that is going to interact with these, if I use my knife tool, let's choose solid, and I slice through these two, let's take a look at what I get. These are two completely separate shapes, whereas these, although they're still grouped together, here, let's ungroup them, I can now still manipulate these individually. So that can be important when you're trying to manipulate shapes using your erase or your knife tool, because depending on your outcome that you want, you may choose to release or make a compound path. So just something else to keep in mind. Okay, so enough with basic shapes. Let's go ahead and make a project using our newfound modify tools. So what I've done here is I have brought in a clip art of mine, okay? And this one in particular has a lot of use for the modify panel. So we're going to recreate it, but I just wanted you to have a starting point to see where we're going with this. So I'm going to slide this guy over here to the left. So we are going to be working with your basic shapes over here. The first thing that I want to do is draw a circle. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It doesn't even have to be the perfect shape for what you need, but give it somewhat an oval look because what we're going to do is we're going to be using the bottom half to form the top part of our glass. Okay, now I'm gonna use the knife tool. And remember we have it set to solid and not outline. Now I'm just gonna choose a spot and I'm gonna hold down my shift key so that I get a straight cut. Now I can delete the upper portion. And actually what I'm gonna do is I will open that. This is your point editing. And I'm gonna draw that up a little bit. There we go, so that's more what I had in mind. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create another one, but instead of drawing another circle, I'm just going to duplicate this one down on the bottom. And then I need to create the stem for my glass. So I'm going to use a rectangle. And then I need to draw the base. Now you notice they're all overlapping just a little bit, but I'm not going to weld anything together yet. I am going to go ahead and center them. I'm going to move them off to the side here because there is another thing that I need to do. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate the top of my glass two times because what I need to do is create these little accent areas, reflective areas, whatever you want to call those. So I'm going to shorten those down and because my focus is right here, this bottom piece, okay? So let's center those to each other. And here's the first time that our modify panel is going to come into play. I'm going to come over to my modify panel. And remember, I need to make sure that my top part is on front. 
I'll select those together and hit subtract. And that leaves this tiny little sliver here that's going to fit just perfectly in the bottom of my glass. There we go. Now let's do it again for this layer. I'm going to create a duplicate and shrink this layer down. Then we will center them, come back to our modify panel, and hit subtract. So those are our two accent pieces. I can make this one a little smaller. It's looking a little large. With those in place, now I can select all of these original pieces that we made. Now all I'm doing is I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard and clicking on the shapes that I want and I can hit weld. Now let's go ahead and center those little accent pieces, right? I'm going to go back to my modify panel and I'm going to choose make a compound path. Do you remember why we're going to do that? Let's fill it in and that leaves those pieces white. It incorporates those pieces as part of the design. So that is my basic margarita glass. So now the next part that I'm going to do is this slice of lime over here. Okay, and this is really easy. We're going to be working with the ellipse tool. And I always start off larger. Um, it doesn't have to be large, but I can always shrink it down if I want to. And we're going to do that again. Oops. So let's center those together. There we go. And actually, let's cheat. And for the third one, I will use the offset. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose these two outside circles, use our modify panel, and choose make a compound path. What that's going to do, let's see if we choose this pretty green color, that's going to give me that outside rim that I need for the line. Okay, now I don't need that right away, but I wanted to have it sized correctly. Next, let's move this out of the way also. We're going to combine some of these, but I'm going to use a rectangle. I want to make a nice skinny rectangle. And I need a total of one, two, three, four, four of these. Okay, so I just used my shortcuts on my keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I will open the rotate. I'll rotate one 90 degrees, another one 45 degrees, and another one the negative 45 degrees. And I'm going to center these all to each other, and then we're going back to the modify panel and weld. You kind of see where we're going with this? Now, if I select these, again, we want to center them, but then on my modify panel, I can choose subtract. And that's going to give me these individual slices that I needed for my line. I'm just going to group those together. And now for the, the finale, you can center these. I'm going to choose make a compound path and get them all filled with that pretty green. And now I have my lemon slice to go with my nice margarita glass. There we go. So what do you guys think? It is um, a little boring without the text. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's do something different though. Instead of the just a little salty, let's just do hello. Because I mean, what says hello better than a little cocktail? Now I know that that font, I believe it was ochre. There we go. And of course I can manipulate those. Here, let's do it the easy way. I manipulated the salty text with the um, warp panel, but let's not, let's not worry about that right now. We're just going to ungroup these and then I can manipulate them individually. So no pressure to learn the warp panel on top of the modify panel right now. There we go. And now, do you remember, we're going to make a compound path. And there is our text. Now, if you want to, completely up to you. You can come back to your knife tool. This is just the easiest way to do it. And I can slice off this part of my lemon and this part on the bottom. There we go. And delete these pieces. Make sure that these are regrouped 
to stay together. And now I don't even have to worry about layering. I can just, oh, I grouped those together. I just want these. Now that will just sit right there on the top of my glass. All right, there we go. And in theory, we have a finished design. So let's recap. We used weld when we welded all these shapes together. We used subtract when we made our little accent pieces um, that represent our glass, okay? Those are nice to have because they also offer that division and they add character to your glass. Um, then we used the make a compound path, both for these pieces to incorporate them into the glass and for our text. And then up here for our lime, we used make a compound path and weld and subtract. So lots of goodies that we found on our modify panel. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret that when in doubt, I usually go through and click on the different icons in the modify panel until one of them does what I want it to do. So that probably seems a little silly to say, especially after the fact, but learning the modify panel and the different uh, tools that are available isn't always the easiest, but you know, with a little trial and error, and remember that you always have that undo button. Okay, if you didn't know, your undo button is up here at the top, or if you like shortcuts, you can use Control Z on your keyboard. So that part is completely up to you, but don't be afraid to get in there and really, you know, test your designing skills or just, you know, manipulating the designs that you already have and see what you can do with them. So definitely lots of useful things to be found in the modify panel and hopefully you feel a little bit better about using it now. So what do you think about the modify panel? Not quite as scary once you get the down low on what everything does and what it can do. It is a very powerful tool and I'm excited that we were able to explore it with you. So hopefully this means right around the corner, you will be up to not only modifying some designs, but creating your own in the future. So super exciting. All right, guys, I really appreciate you joining me today. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in the comments. We do come back and check in with you guys. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that today because we have so many more tutorials planned for you in the future. Thanks for watching.